what's going on everybody uh so we are back at unlimited today um we got a lot of great progress going on i'm not going to be talking on the camera too much i'm going to turn around to dylan here he has been working hard about this i think the I'm, I'm a little threatened only because dylan seems just as excited about this project as i am man so let's let's here is a peek of the jeep dylan what's going on man first of all introduce yourself and what do you drive uh, my name is Dylan. I go by Chief JKU or Chief Edition JKU on Instagram because um, I drive a 2017 Jeep Wrang Chief Edition Jeep Wrangler on uh, 38s. Basically, it's it's a pretty simplistic, but you have fun. Yeah. You smile every time you drive it. Uh, until currently. Well, you know, <laughs> sometimes there's engine there's... issues I gotta fix, but yeah. <laughs> and of course it happened just after the warranty, so naturally, naturally, so, uh, gotta love it how that happens. I gotta get that going before spring comes, but yeah, we'll yeah. get to it. There you go. But first, we'll finish this. <laughs> Heck yeah, dude. Cool. So, so you have been cranking this one out. You gutted it. You were telling me you had this thing gutted in an hour. Uh, between an hour, hour half ish. So yeah, close to the hour mark, but. Um, and you know when you touch so many Jeeps, it, you kind of get a rhythm of how things flow and what the easiest way to go about disassembly and assembly, so. Right on. Um, I kind of have that in my back pocket where it might take somebody a little longer at home, but. Yeah. Um, that's why we have the knowledge and the skill set here. Dude, um, when you're as passionate about it, it's, it's, it's refreshing as hell to come to somewhere where it's just as passionate about it as you are like right. when i came in you know it's it's dylan and i in the shop now but like when i came in everybody was excited about it everyone was checking this out we got the gopros that are up in the corners yeah we'll just pick it right back up not sure what the interruption was it'll be totally seamless on there <laughs> editing movie magic because i learned to edit or not. <laughs> Guess we'll find out. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All of this is probably staying in. <laughs> um, so, but yeah, everyone's been out here. Um, it's been all hands on this one, eh? Uh, for the most part, um, especially when the more intricate pieces that work requires two, three, maybe four hands to put pieces in place before they get pack welded. Right on. Um, so, um, but overall, I've just been having a blast putting this thing together. Hell yeah, um, man. Between gutting it, prepping it, um, just even laying it out on the floor here. Yeah. And I've just seen it, what it looks like on a 2D scale pretty much, and I was like, this thing's going to be sweet. <laughs> and then as I keep putting pieces in, I'm just like, yeah. And it's like, got me really considering yeah what my next mod's gonna be <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome man don't know if the wallet agrees but you know <laughs> yeah this this is i you know i was thinking about on my way down here today and this is almost one of those projects where as far as like planned budgeted sort of build pieces this is kind of one of the last ones for me where i'm like yeah i know i want to do this like i mean and you know the funny thing is everybody talks about safety right and where does it start starts by um the surrounding of the occupants yeah and yeah. um i've seen some nasty videos of stock cages completely collapsing and folding and stuff so oh yeah um you definitely will not have this issue with this yeah yeah because the way i mean so if we we're just sort of scanning over everything you know you go all the way in so the generate cage welded in bolted in at some of the bottom but like you cut out the entire cage um some trim pieces can go back on but uh you you I sent me most of them will have to be modified yeah most modified okay so especially like i think you said you wanted to try to keep as many trim pieces from around the a pillar and the sound bar and the b pillar or something like that yeah um, yeah so that's gonna take a little bit of like intricate work to try to make those all fit right on um, but we'll make it fit um yeah we, it's just gonna take that little bit of extra time and finesse to uh make all those pieces fit and try to make this look 
close to factory like on the inside is feeling as possible yeah yeah because i know i mean even even some of like the the personal touches where it's like you know it, it could be very simple but like we were talking about when it comes to even the grip handles um coming in and getting in and out of the vehicle and really seeing where does does it go here is it better if it's turned in are we going you know somewhere somewhere to really pick it where it's like where where do we really want to grab what's the easiest way right and everybody has different preferences so yeah if i can make it more suited to you and what's going to be more comfortable for you in the long run because you're going to be the one driving it um so and I want it to feel natural. So like if you're right. in a situation where you need your grab handle, it's not gonna feel out of the way or in an uncomfortable position. I want it to feel tailored to you. Right on, yeah. So that's kind of that. like one of those things where we'll get the seats back in it, you know, closer to the end and then have you come in again and just say, hey, where does it feel natural? You yeah. Know, and orientation, you know, and stuff like that. So yeah, um, it's kind of more tailored to you. Yeah, yeah, love that. Well, even, even to like, so we, we got the X bar in the back, which is just, I mean, you, you talk about protecting occupants and, you know, solving sort of crush zones. I, I think if this sits on its roof for a minute, it, it still won't move. Like this thing looks stout. Oh <laughs> uh, no. Yeah, and, it's, <laughs> there should be no issues with, I mean, yeah. it should just roll right over this thing. Yeah. Yeah. Which is what we want. And making sure when we do this knowing that a five point harness and the right seat is going to be key to yes. make sure okay you've now changed it so your crumple zones aren't the same you got to make sure the occupant isn't moving either yes because this is only going to protect you so far now we need to restrain you from tumbling inside of this yep right because hitting your head on one of these or yeah. this or something could potentially be worse than yes. the roll cage <laughs> yeah. um, folding in on you. So yeah, um, yeah, we need to keep you uh, firmly planted in your seat. Um, so that's why tying in a four or five point harness is typically go hand in hand with yeah. you know your PRP or your Caribou or um, what other other brands you want to run. But those those seats are designed to restrain the occupant yeah. from. Uh, getting tossed around yeah 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 I, I love to going back to some of like the personal touches like so the the v bar <laughs> up at the dash there it's it's we we played with a couple different layouts it was touching in the middle and then we moved it out i the final look of that dude is just nailed love the way that follows the body love the way it follows the lines this thing just is badass what so so like as you've been doing it what has been were, were there any sort of hurdles, challenges? Tell us about your experience putting this thing together. Probably, I mean, Generate does a really good job of making this like all fit seamlessly together. But the hardest part is probably where you have five pieces that all have to be tied in simultaneously. So you gotta put in uh, the harness bar while you're putting in the lowers and the upper pieces all at the same time. So having two, three, four sets of hands. Yeah. Um, same kind of goes with this section up here because um, these have to go in at the same time this goes in. Yeah, yeah. And while you're doing that, you have to check the angles of your main um, your main pillar from your uh, D to A pillar and make sure that's all square. And so, um, you know, just taking the extra time to Get a second hand, second set of hands, and making sure everything's square, it's yeah. straight. Um, um, and then, you know, obviously doing all that. And then we take a hard top, put it on top, and then making sure, you know, like the uh, screw holes here for, um, yeah. that would suck down the uh, freedom panels. And, you know, so everything's gonna line up and everything's square and, you know, that's right, because you guys were center. saying you took a hard top already, and because because just to clarify, everything right now is just tacked. Yes, everything is in sort of in the layout where it's you you see the shape of the cage. Nothing is permanent, so if you do find anything out of square, if you're you're you guys have put on a hard top already, you saw okay, yep, we're fitting everything up. 
this is a, a cage has to be a slow process you got to take your time <laughs> especially um i found that the windshield like between the um, the dash bar the um wind, like windshield brackets and then um stuff like that because you fold the windshield up and then but the, if you don't have the windshield in the right spot then it kind of changes the door seams so we put the mm. doors back on okay right um, on i noticed like that one over there i had to adjust where it was tack welded because i couldn't get those doors to line up right so when you put the doors back on you put the hard top on you kind of see where all your seams are going yeah and it just co wasn't quite right so i removed that one allowed the windshield to fold back just a little bit more repositioned it and then everything kind of wanted to follow and seam uh, and seal up properly so it was like one of those where if i didn't do that the first time and i went all this far yeah it's too late yep. i'd have to either undo all this or have the chance that you're going to have a door that's not going to seal yeah a top that's not going to seal uh, you're going to get wind noise yeah and you don't want that yep yep so I would hate to deliver a product that, you know, leaks, has winds whistling coming through, yeah. doesn't seal, so yeah. to take your time and make sure that's right the first time is really key. For sure, for sure. Well, it's, I, what, what I get out of it is it's like, all, all those things, yes, absolutely, it's important as a shop, as a company, but those are things where it's like, to me, that's you caring about it as if it was your own Jeep. Yeah. that's that's one of those where it's like no no take the time a, a roll cage this this is definitely one where we've talked about because this is such a big project you know you you got to be able to step away for a minute do something take a time take a look at it watch the lines like this is th this isn't a you get eight hours full grinding in it's it takes time dude this is this is heavily heavily involved yes i this will it's probably be, <laughs> if I had to guess, it would probably be five or six weeks. Yeah. Like, just because once I get everything finalized, then you got to disassemble it all. Yep. Yep. Just to final weld it, paint it. <laughs> you got to pull all the brackets that you, you know, spent the time to put into the tub. Yeah. Pull those back out so they can get painted. Um, touch up some areas of the tub. Yeah. That need to be painted and um, sealed. Um, I, I want to show one of those areas there where we're touching up the tub because you you guys did something, man, that I, I think was like way beyond. So this corner that we're showing here, let's kind of talk through why it looks the way it is, what it would look like, and you guys went above and beyond on this one instead of just having a hacked off piece of metal. So this area right here is technically where your deep pillar, your factory um, roll cage gets cut. Right. And one thing that Genrite does is they, if you want to look at this picture, I guess. Yeah. Um, they just tell you to cap it. Yeah. Well, personally, one of the things that we like is, is just remove that bracket yeah. That seam, whatever you want to call it, and just remove it completely from the tub. Right. Yeah. Um, that way it does. It's not just a capped off piece of pipe or you know whatever you want to call it sitting yeah. on the tub. It looks it, it much looks more intentional me, here. Yeah, it yeah. looks tacky. Yes. Um, yes. You got a nice. I don't know. Because I mean your tub's rhino lined or bed lined, so when you yep. fill all that in with rhino line, it should seem seamless. Yeah. Like it was never intentionally there. You know, I, I keep looking at that little spot and I, I don't know. I mean, maybe I could a do a something like yeah. you can make a little tray or something to go across. Yeah. I don't know. But... That's a perfect little flat spot. You know, man, you, you, you just said it now the wheels are turned and could easily make some sort of bar that goes across here for a support and tie it in up here and bang, you got a shelf right there or you know get get a little creative but i i like that flat piece because now i can this this is usable space again yeah or if you're somebody who does a little bit of overlanding or you really big in occupying you know the, as much real estate as possible that yeah that's a good chunk of real estate oh yeah for sure what, that bracket would sit probably about up to here yep yep with the cap in it so i mean to free up that much real estate it it's 
So some people may not be much, but to others... Every inch counts. <laughs> yeah, but it's one of those personal touches where, you know, if you just... So just hacking it off and capping it. Yeah. Just remove it. Yeah. I mean, it's only a couple plug welds and yeah. I mean, it takes a little bit more time because you know, the body panels right here. So you may have to do some body work afterwards, but you know, on, um, on, on this Jeep, that's more than okay. I, I have to ask, have you found any spots on the Jeep that it's like, okay, maybe we're a little tweaked. We're a little bent. Any, any um, surprises on Oculus here? Your doors my doors <laughs> um, when i was lining up your doors i was like i don't know if these are perfect doors to really try to line up the door seems a bit no offense but i mean they're, they're especially That's fair. passenger side i i can thank windrock for that one i know um, in particular there's a couple of dents on those doors from windrock that uh yeah there's a there's a certain body line to it now <laughs> um that and uh just from Trying to get off your your sliders. Yeah, um, that was a little bit painstaking, um, a little rusty. Yeah, so it took a little bit of time, but <laughs> we got them off. I gotta do a better job with anti seize. Anti seize, anti seize everything. <laughs> yeah, because because the the truth I mean, we is, we live in a rust belt. I mean, oh, so yeah. the chances that the fastener is going to either a strip out, break off, or corrode, and try to terminate itself into an object is very high around here. Yeah. Again, and I see. Yeah, that's no joke. Or I, actually there is a spot on your windshield I have to fix because I had to drill the bolt on your windshield. Oh dang. Yeah, wow. the, the uh, cage not wanted to spin. Perfect. So yeah, yeah so yeah. I, I have to go back and fix that. Yeah, but um, yeah, so there, there's, yeah a few pieces there but yeah well it's a it's a I mean, it's 17 be, so it's yeah to be expected and you know um it's just where we live how they treat our roads and the environment yeah. we're in i mean this, i mean if this was i'm sure if you took it to a shop maybe in texas or california <laughs> they'd probably be flipping their lid right now yeah you're you're used to it <laughs> we, we know how to deal with it and overcome it right yes yes <laughs> that's a better way to put it yeah dude this is coming together awesome though man i i really appreciate you uh putting in all the hard work you have and and being just as excited about i am you know because it's it's cool to be able like you've sent me texts you've sent me videos little updates here and there and uh, I, I greatly appreciate that. And it's, this is fun, man. This is a well, fun build. The biggest highlight of it is, I think it was Friday. Yeah. You came through that door and I had about 90% of this tack together and just see your face Dude. light up. Yes. That makes it all worth it. Yes. I the, think the reaction of the customers and when they see the final product and just how happy they are that, you know, we were able to deliver such a product. That's what makes everything worth it. Hell yeah. So Hell yeah. that's what we strive for. We don't always nail it hundred percent, but um, there's a learning curve sometimes or, you know, yeah. things, but we strive to make every customer as happy as we can. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, and just to see your face light up, just seeing it mocked up essentially. Dude. Yeah. And you were just blown <laughs> away and just seeing that smile, like, you're ear to ear and I'm just like, that, yeah, that's it. That's why I do it. Hell yeah. That's I, Dylan. I think that's a great note to end on. Thank you so much. I, I, I held Dylan over here tonight to, to stay late and talk about the bill and all that stuff. And I greatly appreciate you, man. Thank you so you. much for this. Thank you. Um, we're going to cap it here. I think that's a perfect note to end on. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Make sure you keep watching little updates coming from Dylan, from Clint, from Unlimited, from the pages. Stay tuned. I like Jeeps. Do you like Jeeps? I like Jeeps. Not just Jeeps. All not just Jeeps. All off-road vehicles. Yes. All off-road vehicles. We're not exclusive. That's right. We just want to have a good time on the trail. Mm -hmm. Let's have a good time on the trail. We'll see you guys soon. Bye.